Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on transmission line theory. For this video, I'm going to concentrate on the special cases. In fact, there are actually two special cases. The first case that I'm going to discuss on this video will be a lossless transmission line, basically terminate with a short circuit. Okay, which means that at the load side, is actually a short circuit. So this is the special case that I'm going to discuss on this video. While on my next video, basically will be a lossless transmission line. Instead of short circuit, they actually terminate with an open circuit. So this will be another special case that I will discuss on my next video. So in short, okay, we may make use of these two special cases. The lossless transmission line terminate either with a short circuit or with an open circuit. So this falls under the special cases of consideration for the transmission line theory. This will be the part 12 series discussion on transmission line theory. So if you're keen to know more about transmission line theory, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on transmission line theory. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this video, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, once again, from my bottom of the heart, thank you so much. Before we discuss on the special case of a transmission line terminate with a short circuit, let's do a very quick revisit on these two set of equations that I have derived based on my earlier on discussion on transmission line theory. So again, if you are not able to understand how I actually obtained these two set of equation, please see my previous video under the description. So from here again, okay, I have also derived this Basically, this is a reflection coefficient, which is equal to VO minus over VO plus. Okay, why I write over here is because I have the intention to replace the VO minus. Okay, so you can see from here, cross multiply, okay, VO minus is actually equal to reflection coefficient multiplied by VO plus. So the next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this VO minus with refraction coefficient and VO plus. Same for here, this is VO minus. I'm going to replace them with refraction coefficient and VO plus. So next, what I'm going to do is from here, I can see that the common factor is VO plus. So I take the common factor VO plus. From here, I can see that the common factor is VO plus over Z0. So I'm going to take the common factor and I rearrange these two set of equation. So next, Okay, so I have also derived this on my previous discussion. This is a reflection coefficient, which is equal to ZL minus Z0 over ZL plus Z0. Okay, but for this case here, under the first special consideration, my ZL is actually a short circuit. When it's actually a short circuit, this is almost equal to 0 ohm. So therefore, I can assume that my ZL is actually equal to 0 ohm. So once my ZL is 0 ohm, okay, I can replace this ZL with 0. And finally, I get this equation. And from here, I can calculate that my refraction coefficient is equal to minus 1. So this 2 is basically what I have obtained on my previous slide. So I'm going to replace their refraction coefficient okay, with minus 1. So therefore, this minus 1 okay, plus minus become minus. Okay, this minus minus become positive. So basically, I have obtained another two set of equation. Okay, so on my previous video discussion, which is the part 11 series discussion on transmission line theory. Okay, so this is a mathematical term, which I have shown it to you on my previous video. Okay, so because of time constraint, I probably can't discuss this further more. Okay, but over here, you can see that I'd like to replace this term okay, with J2 sine theta. I'd like to replace this term with 2 cosine theta. Okay, but 
at this time, you must be very careful over here. You can see that this is a positive term. This is a negative term. But over here, you can see that it's minus term and positive term. So therefore, I need to multiply a minus over here okay, in order to shift these two position. So this position here, I need to multiply by a minus here. So will be replaced by minus j2 sine. Okay, instead of theta, I might replace with a beta z over here. So basically, this is another set of equation that I derive. Same for the current. Okay, this term here, I can replace by 2 cosine theta. So 2, I put it over here. So 2 VO plus over Z0 cosine beta Z. Okay, so basically, this again is another two set of equation that I derive. So later on, okay, I will use this one, okay, which I call it as the first discussion. This will be the second discussion okay, later on. Well, on my third discussion here, basically, this is basically the impedance Z in. Okay, again, on my previous video, I have derived this equation. So if you're not sure how I actually obtain this equation, please see the playlist under the description. But over here, you can see that earlier on, I mentioned that this is terminate. Lossless transmission line terminate with a short circuit. And short circuit means that ZL is equal to zero. So over here, I can replace the ZL zero here. And this part zero, this whole thing disappeared, this whole thing disappeared. So what I left will be over here. So you can see from here. So Z0, Z0 cancel. Okay, so therefore, okay, I actually obtain this Z in equals to J Z0 tangent beta length. Okay, so basically this is the third consideration. Remember earlier on, I have mentioned that this will be the first consideration. This will be my second consideration. Wow, this will be my third consideration. Okay, again, before I move on, I sincerely urge you guys to consider to like this video and also subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much. Okay, so now we are ready to study these three considerations. Okay, so this is the first consideration here that I mentioned earlier on. How can we actually derive this circuit here? Okay, so you can see from here, this circuit is basically Z. Okay, over V over Z divided by 2J VO plus. So how I actually can obtain this number? What I need to do is I move my J onto the other side. I move my 2 to the other side and VO plus on the other side. So you can see that this term is similar with this term here. Okay, so this term left over will be minus sine beta Z. Okay, so I need to consider five scenario. First case when Z is equal to zero. Second case will be when Z equals to minus lambda over 4. The third situation will be Z equals to minus lambda over 2. While the fourth consideration will be Z equals to minus 3 lambda over 4. And last but not least, when Z equals to minus lambda. Okay, so the first consideration when Z is equal to 0. Okay, you can see that I replaced by Z equals to 0. So sine 0 okay, will be 0, okay, which means that the first point when z is equal to zero, okay, this term is also equal to zero. So next, okay, on the second consideration, when z equals to minus lambda over four, so you can see from here, so over here, okay, this beta is actually equal to two pi over lambda. So I replace my z with minus lambda over four. So I cancel, cancel my lambda. Okay, it become pi over two. Okay, remember the minus term here. So therefore, if I punch my calculator, I should derive this one. Okay, remember for degree, okay, pi is equal to 180 degree. Okay, so if you want to calculate in radian, then you can enter this as a pi number. But if you intend to calculate as a degree, then remember pi is equal to 180 degree. Okay, so finally, I arrived this part here, which means that when z equals to minus lambda over 4, sorry, minus lambda over 4, this point here will be equal to 1, which I have shown you over here. Okay, next on the third situation, okay, when z equals to minus lambda over 2. Okay, so from here you can see that what you need to do is basically you punch your calculator. You can see that this point is actually equal to 0, which is over here. And then come to the fourth term, when z equals to minus 3 lambda over 4. Again, you can punch your calculator. You should be able to derive that this term is equal to minus 1. Okay, which is here. Okay, so and then last but not least, okay, when z equals to minus lambda, so therefore this whole term here is equal to zero. 
and that's how I actually obtain this diagram here. Okay, so basically, what I want to do a very quick conclusion is I want to mention that basically you can imagine that this is a lossless transmission line. Basically, they terminate with a short circuit. So from here, you can see that I will have my voltage maximum when it is so-called lambda over 4 away from my reference line. And again, from here, once they reach this minus lambda over 2, okay, it will have an outcome of 0. And finally, I will have my voltage minimum when the length of the transmission line is equal to minus 3 lambda over 4. Basically, with this special case, you can see that okay, I will have my maximum peak when I actually has the distance, the length of the transmission line is equal to minus lambda over 4. And when the length of the transmission line is equal to lambda over 2, okay, basically, I will have a 0. And when it increase furthermore with a length of 3 lambda over 4, then I will have my voltage minimum point. Okay, remember, this is my maximum voltage point, this is my minimum voltage point, and these three points are all the zero term. Okay, basically, you can make use of this special case for consideration on the future calculation on this lossless transmission line terminate with a short circuit. Okay, so this is the first consideration that I want to discuss. The second consideration will be the current, if you still remember. It's the same as what I have discussed earlier on. Basically, I just want to do this and I want to prove how I actually obtain this graph here. So everything is still the same. I need to consider five situation. Okay, when Z is, is equal to zero, when Z is equals to minus lambda over four, when Z equals to minus lambda over two, and when Z equals to minus three lambda over four, and last but not least, when Z equals to minus lambda. Okay, so I don't think I can go through in more detail, okay, but trust me, if you punch your calculator, you should be able to derive this equation. So from here, first thing here will be one, okay, which is the maximum. Okay, remember when it's a short circuit, the current will be maximum. Okay, so therefore this will be the maximum point. After that, lambda over four, okay, basically when the length is equals to lambda over four, Okay, or more precise, when z equals to minus lambda over 4, okay, this will come to the first zero point. And when the length continues to increase okay, to lambda over 2, which means that z equals to minus lambda over 2 here, you can see that it becomes the lowest point. Okay, after that, it actually goes to the zero point again, and finally, it actually obtains the maximum point. So in short, okay, if you design your transmission line, Okay, so let's say if you want to have your maximum current, then the point will be at zero and also at minus lambda. However, let's say if I want to get a minimum current, then the length I want to tap on will be on minus lambda over two. So basically this will be for the consideration of current. And then last but not least, okay, let's quickly consider okay, the impedance point on the transmission line. Okay, so basically this is the third discussion that I mentioned earlier on. Okay, everything is still the same. Again, I need to consider five situation here. So when Z equals to zero, when Z equals to minus lambda over four, when Z equals to minus lambda over two, and when Z equals to three, lambda over four, and last but not least, when Z equals to lambda. Okay, so from here you can calculate that. Okay, first case here, when Z equal to zero, Okay, basically, like, like what I mentioned earlier on, it's a short circuit. So therefore, the impedance is very, very close to zero, or we can assume it to be equal to zero. Okay, when the length start to increase, okay, so basically when the length increase to lambda over four, which means that the lossless transmission line, let's say, is lambda over four away from the reference point of the load, then I will have a infinity, okay, infinity impedance. Okay, which you can see from here, infinity impedance. And then when I actually increase my transmission line further, for example, my transmission line as lambda over two, so basically the first zero point will appear. Okay, I have the first zero point over here. And when it's actually lambda over two, this will be another so-called the null point. 
N U L L now point or zero point. And again, okay, you can see that all these calculation, I'm pretty sure they are all correct. So basically, this is the profile of Z in when the transmission line okay at different length. Okay, so in short, when the lossless transmission line terminate with a short circuit, anything that you want to design, for example, I want to design to have a maximum impedance then I will consider to use this length of lambda over 4 or length of 3 lambda over 4. And when I want to have a zero point, then I will consider okay, the transmission line at lambda over 2. Okay, So it's quite straightforward. So basically, with this, I like to end my discussion. Remember over here, I have considered a special case when a lossless transmission line terminate with a short circuit. I have discussed in short three possible way okay, to look at. First will be the voltage. Okay, so this will be the voltage way. Next will be on the current. And then last but not least on the impedance over here. So what happened is basically if I want to have maximum impedance, for example, for this case, I know what will be the length of the lossless transmission line in order to get the maximum set in, for example, for this case here. For example, for this case, for the current case, if I want to have the minimum current, I know that the transmission line need to be at lambda over 2. Okay, then I will be able to have the minimum numbers of current okay, on the transmission line. And then if, again, for the voltage-wise, okay, let's say I want to have my maximum, I know that it must be lambda over 4 over the load side in order to have the maximum voltage. And if I want to have the minimum voltage, then it need to be three lambda over four away from the load. So with this, i like to end my discussion. Please stop to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now.